Nuclear energy today, despite providing a, a large fraction of electrical production in some countries like France, remains a controversial topic. Perceived risks from nuclear waste, proliferation of nuclear weapons, nuclear power plant accidents like Fukushima are generally at the forefront of public and policy discussions. And they underlie the reasons why so many societies resist new nuclear power stations or even shutting down their existing ones. At our summit, we explored the possibility that new, still fairly futuristic, uh, reactor designs might be possible that would first dramatically reduce the waste that's produced from those, those reactors and also burn existing waste that's, that's been generated by old reactor designs as a source of energy. Second, to avoid fissile material production that could be used to make nuclear weapons and of course have some basic feature designs to them that eliminate the possibility that meltdowns could happen of the like of Fukushima. This pathway takes a long view on the potential of new nuclear technologies and lays out some of the steps for beginning to explore how it can contribute to our electrical low carbon future. Nuclear energy has proven its capacity to deliver reliable, low cost, low carbon baseload power on a large scale. Build out of the existing technological base, of course, offers the possibility of providing, providing energy on a terawatt scale. Closing of the fuel cycles to reduce nuclear waste and making nuclear fission sustainable over a thousand years is the gleam in the eye here. If the world is to move away from fossil fuels and electricity generation, it is unlikely without a transition to advanced nuclear technologies. Designs such as that for the integral fast reactor allow the nuclear fuel cycle to be closed and they can burn most of the nuclear waste such as reactor grade plutonium and minor actinides. Allowing reuse of the waste from earlier generation plants and turn that waste from a liability into an asset. A small amount of non-processable waste would still be generated although this waste would stabilize within a few centuries rather than tens of thousands of years as they arise with the traditional reactor concepts. Going from the once through fuel cycle that gets about 5% of the energy used in the fuel and 95% of the waste created to a full recycling via the integral fast reactors reduces waste to about a percent and energy utilization to about 99%. So a transition to advanced nuclear, as I indicated earlier, does offer that potential of an inexhaustible, non-carbon energy source on a terawatt scale. The challenge is, of course, establishing the confidence in the inherent safety and sustainability of existing nuclear, and that is and will continue to remain a challenge. Advanced fuel cycles and the subsequent transition to IFRs and thorium-based accelerator-driven systems hold enormous promise. There are technical issues, but none of these are considered insurmountable. In the post-Fukushima world, public skepticism has, of course, translated into policy uncertainty, although China and India continue to lead on with the construction of these reactors. Technical hurdles need to be overcome along with building societal acceptance to support advancing the next generation of nuclear energy technology. To accomplish this, significant planning, research, and development are needed. Additionally, as Jason and Jatin described, advanced nuclear has the ability to address the risk and storage issues that current nuclear energy faces, highlighting the fact that these technologies involve the recycling of fuel and burning of old waste. Communicating this potential for societal acceptance is critical to accelerating research and development. With the right level of commitment, we could see a demonstration integral fast reactor built by 2020 and a demonstration thorium accelerator-driven system by 2030. Beyond 2030, fourth-generation nuclear plants could represent one-third of the market.